Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. We still have some few, a few people joining, um, but we will go ahead and get started with the introductions and some thank yous. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for being with us tonight. We really appreciate you joining us. This is going to be a very fun event with um, Woodford Reserve and some great um, Kentucky Derby cocktails. So um, before we get started, just a few things. I currently have you all on mute. If you wouldn't mind just staying that way, um, just background noise, that way we can hear the presentation and we don't have to worry about all the background noise, stuff like that, that'd be awesome. We do encourage you to ask questions or share your comments, whatever it is. Um, if you just wanna put it in the chat, um, we will be watching that throughout the night and we'll be able to answer any questions or comments that you might have. Um, and if you do feel comfortable turning on your cameras, we would appreciate it. It's just so much easier to talk to faces than it is to the black screen. Um, and with that, I just want to do a few, few thank yous. Um, a thank you to Davidson's Beer, Wine, and Spirits um, for their support. For those of you who are local, you know that they always give a coupon for this, and it's amazing their support that they give us. So thank you to Davidson's, Rebecca over there, and everybody over there for their support and, um, through this whole entire series, not even just this one, but through this entire series. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and also to Megan and Woodford Reserve, we really appreciate you being with us tonight and we are super excited to get this um, kicked off and going. So without further ado, I will go ahead and turn it over to Megan and she will get us started with some amazing cocktails. Excellent, thank you so much. And once again, a big thank you to the HRCA as well as Davidson's for giving me the platform here to tell you guys a little bit about the Derby and about some of the cocktails and the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. So with that, let's just get started with the official cocktail. Has anyone made a julep before? If you have, I'd love to see it in the comments below. It is a relatively simple cocktail that gets a little bit of flack because of the muddling aspect, the very first step of the drink. And of course the crushed ice as well. I see you guys crushing your ice fresh, that's fantastic. Um, if you don't have crushed ice, if you didn't go to Sonic earlier today or you don't have it coming out of your fridge, feel free to just take a gallon size freezer bag and hammer it home with a rolling pin or any other heavy flat bottomed kind of saucepan that you have. That'll give you the perfect crushed ice. So when people tell me that they want to be able to make better cocktails at home, they want to try to make more um, professional and like you're at a bar tasting cocktails, I usually tell them it's one of three things. One, are you using fresh ingredients? Like are you using fresh citrus or fresh mint as we'll be using today? Two, are you measuring your drinks? Because you may not be putting enough alcohol in, you might be putting too much alcohol in. And then the third one is, does your cup have enough ice in it? So uh, ice is actually an ingredient to the drink. It's not just something that keeps your drink cold and makes it really refreshing. Um, the dilution in it is actually really important. It's about 10 to 20% of your drink most of the time. So when you build a cocktail, it's really important to have it full to the brim with ice because that dilution is part of the ingredients. And depending on whether you build or stir or shake your cocktail, that dilution, that water is a very important aspect to your cocktail. So make sure you have enough crushed ice. I've got about four of these lovely guys just kind of hanging out in the wings, just to make sure I have enough to kind of go forward with it. But we'll just start building the base to our drink. So I always like to start with the least expensive ingredients and go up higher, because if you mess up, you at least didn't throw out the good stuff. So uh, for a mint julep, we're gonna start with some simple syrup. I made a brown sugar simple syrup. You can use white sugar. Simple syrup is just equal parts water and sugar. You can honestly stir it together and wait for it to dissolve at room temperature. Or if you want it to last longer in the fridge, feel free to put it in a saucepan and heat it up until it boils and then let it cool down to room temperature to use for cocktails. That's also a really great way to infuse your simple syrups with other flavors. If you wanna add mint right to the simple syrup and make a mint simple syrup. Or if you want to add um, like frozen fruit, that's a great way to kind of add different flavors to your cocktail right in the first key ingredient. So how do you measure your cocktails? If I said measuring is really important. This is the fancy tool that you probably see at bars. It's not the most convenient thing. It's honestly not what I use at home. This, this is what I use at home. I hope everybody has one. And if not, you can even just use tablespoon measures. For instance, one ounce is just two tablespoons. So keep that math in mind. 
and we're gonna build a cocktail. So starting with your measure of choice, if you'd like to use a professional jigger, go ahead, but I love my OXO and so I'm gonna stick with it. I've actually seen a lot of bars start to pick this up because it's a little bit more precise. So we're gonna measure a half ounce of simple syrup and pour that right in the base of the glass. So that's your least expensive ingredient it's gonna go in first. Next, pick up some mint. I've got a few nice little sprigs here. Fresh mint, so aromatic. What makes it really aromatic is the oils in it. And so muddling can be a pain. Start pulling off a few leaves. People don't always have a muddler. People don't know what to do with their muddler when they're not making either mojitos or mint juleps. Uh, and so that's why I say, forget the muddler. It's not important. All you need to do is express the oils of the mint. So start pulling off the leaves, pull them, lay them flat in your hand like this, and then just start rubbing them together in your hand. Do it in a circle, really crush them up. Because all you're trying to do is start getting those oils to come out. It smells amazing. So throw that in your glass. Now, the time we've all been waiting for, a little bit of Woodford Reserve. So Woodford Reserve is the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. Back to my handy dandy. And we're gonna pour in two ounces of Woodford bourbon. So I said Woodford bourbon because bourbon is classic to make a Kentucky julep. You've seen that we can do it a hundred different ways. Actually, the julep originally didn't even have bourbon in it. It actually didn't even have alcohol in it traditionally, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so when you make a julep at home, feel free to try out different whiskeys. I, for instance, on Derby Day, love to drink Woodford Reserve dry whiskey in my julep because I think those mint flavors come out so much more strongly. And it's just kind of a fun way to mix things up on Derby Day. All right, so you've got your cup, you've got mint that you've rubbed around in your hand. Everything smells amazing now. You've got simple syrup and you've got bourbon in your cup. So now just take your ice and put just a little bit in. Fill it up halfway. Mine is very crushed and starting to stick together, but it will be perfect. And then take any spoon, I have one of those long fancy bar ones and really kind of just mash it around. You want to start the dilution process because without the dilution of this drink, you're just doing a shot of sugary bourbon. So it's really, really important for us to get the dilution going in this drink. Water is actually one of the most important uh, ingredients in the mint julep cocktail. So otherwise, we're just drinking bourbon on the rocks with some simple syrup and mint in it. So really kind of get that going, get that dilution started. Also keep your first sip from being incredibly strong. Unless you like it that way, then go ahead and stop now. But I like to give it a good 20 seconds. My real bartender stirred, so I don't want to see that one. Excellent. So it's gonna be diluted, but some people like their juleps a little bit sweeter. So I say, feel free to take a tiny sip. Bartender trick, you pour it on the back of your hand where your hand makes a little cup. I like it like that. If you want any more sugar, now is the time to add it. But I am done here, set my spoon aside, and then I'm gonna take the rest of my ice and just pile it up high. Done with one cup, like I said, ample ice. You need plenty of ice to make a mint julep. Very hands-on drink. Very fun to do on Derby Day. Here's talking to people, having a good time. If you have a julep strainer, go ahead and you can start shaping your ice as you put it in the glass. Perfect. And you're done. So notice that I have a julep strainer and I didn't use it to make a julep other than shaping the ice right at the end. And before we're done, take whatever's left of your mint, get it against your hand a couple times, start expressing some of the oils, rip off the super long stem and throw it in for a garnish. You have a mint julep. Cheers, everyone. Oh yeah. I'm ready, I'm ready for Derby Day. I'm very much ready for Derby Day. Um, I love a mint julep. 
I know there are lovers and haters of the mint julep. And so I like to just put out my defense that the mint julep is just a botanical old fashioned and it's meant to be drinking year round. So don't just drink juleps on Derby Day. Feel free to have a julep whenever you want something refreshing that has a little bit of sweetness, that has the amazing kind of earthy balance of bourbon. Uh, and it goes perfectly with just celebrations and getting people together. So don't let the Derby be the only time you do that this year, hopefully. So just play responsibly. So excellent. So I was mentioning before, I didn't use this to make the julep, but it's called a julep strand. Uh, funny story here, you just, uh, back in like the early 1800s when juleps were a really popular cocktail, there wasn't a lot of dental health care. And so the ice actually would start hurting people's teeth when they would try to drink it because, you know, straws at that point were out of the question as well. So they used to serve the drink with the julep strainer. And you'd hold your finger over it and take a sip like this to keep the ice from hitting your teeth because they had sensitive teeth. Now it's just really used for stirred drinks and cocktail bars. It fits in those fancy glass stirring vessels a little bit better and holds back the ice when you're straining it for a strained cocktail. So excellent. How's everyone enjoying their julep so far? Ah, how many ounces of bourbon? I did two ounces of bourbon. Two ounces to half ounce of syrup is a good kind of medley. And then make sure you do stir enough so that you dilute it down. Oh, I see a derby bottle. I love it. The derby bottles change every single year. So feel free to drink them. Inside is Woodford Reserve. Or feel free to keep them. And the package changes every single year. So they always have some local artist do a, um, a painting or a watercolor. This year is a watercolor from Richard Sullivan. Is shaved ice too thin? No, it is not. Some people love shaved ice. I have some bars in Denver who are doing snow cone machines. As long as you get your dilution and you have fun with it, then I think that it's a great option. But so the Derby bottle is really fantastic because it brings in the spirit of the Kentucky Derby. So the julep has a really long history. Um, it goes all the way back to um, the early or late 1700s. Uh, so it actually comes from the word julab, uh, which comes from the Arabic language. And that was a drink that they made for kind of fitness and like just good health. And it was a sweetened tonic of rose and water, basically. And as that cocktail, in its sense, made its way over to the Mediterranean, they dropped the rose and they started adding mint. And then as more people started moving from the European areas over to America, that is when we started getting introduced the julep because the julep was also uh, served as medicine. So you know the saying, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down? So that's very much kind of how a julep was positioned as well. So the julep was really well known for its mint in it. It had an amazing kind of stomach settling qualities. And so a lot of farmers would actually drink them in the morning. And so I don't know if that was as much the mint or the hair of the dog getting them through the next day, but I'll let you guys be the judge there. So uh, from there, um, the julep really started to become the most popular cocktail in Virginia. And Virginia kind of spilled into Kentucky. And where Kentucky really started to grab hold of it and make it their own is when their senator in uh, the early 1800s, I think 1803, uh, brought it up to uh, D.C. and showed everyone at the bar there how to make a, a Kentucky mint julep. And the bar there is still using his recipe today. So it's been a very important tradition of, um, of Kentucky. And so that's why we love to celebrate the mint julep when we celebrate the Kentucky Derby. We always like to say we like to use Kentucky's best on Kentucky's best day. And so the Kentucky Derby is always the first Saturday in May. And that's when all of Kentucky not gets out to celebrate horse racing, to do sporting events, but mostly just to celebrate being a Kentuckian. They always play old Kentucky home. It's the first thing that they do right before the race starts. And I swear, every time I'm on a call with our team back in Kentucky, I think they all start to get a tear in their eye. It is just a really important day in Kentucky for them to kind of realize their history and how much their land kind of gives back to 
gives back to them. And so that kind of comes through in a couple different areas that's shared by their water. So Kentucky actually sits on the third largest limestone aquifer in the world. That's really important for a couple of reasons. One, their water is completely iron free. So it's incredibly soft water. There's not a lot of minerals in it outside of calcium. And so therefore it's very calcium rich. And so that is good for two things, thoroughbred horse raising, making bourbon. And so what that kind of adds to it is it makes really strong bones in horses, but it also makes a really kind of creamy mouthfeel in whiskey. So when we talk about Woodford Reserve, we talk about our five sources of flavor. That comes from our water, our grain bill, our fermentation, our distillation, and our maturation, all of which we have tweaked specifically to be Woodford Reserve's signature flavor. So we created Woodford Reserve in 1996. And so that was really important for us because we weren't the old grandpappy's grandpappy's recipe. We had the technology at the time to evaluate the entire bourbon market and see where there was opportunity to grow. And what we found was that there was a lot of bourbons that kind of fell heavily to one flavor category or another. They were either incredibly spicy or incredibly sweet or incredibly oaky. And one thing that we really noticed is there's not a lot of fruit notes that fruit notes that come through any of the whiskeys. And so in our creation of Woodford Reserve, one, we wanted to go back to our sense of place. The Brown Foreman family has been in Louisville since about 1870. And so the history of Kentucky is very important to them. And so they repurchased, funny story, they had actually purchased the Woodford Reserve distillery before and then sold it and then bought it back. Um, but they purchased the um, old LeBron Grand Distillery, also the old Elijah Pepper Distillery, also the old Dr. Crow Distillery. And so that distillery has been producing whiskey in Kentucky since 1812. And it's really important for them because of the water source that is there. We get all of our water from Glens Creek. We do not filter our water when we put it in for our fermentation. So you actually get all of those incredible mineral buttery characters from the limestone water in our fermentation process that goes an additional three days longer than the industry standard. That was really important for us because we wanted to bring forward all those wonderful fruit flavors that you get in Woodford Reserve. From there, we go into a split distillation. So we do pot and column distillation. The pot distillation gives you a really kind of dark fruit, rich and oily kind of a distillate. Whereas the column distillation gives you a very much more of a lighter fruit and a floral distillation uh, kind of product that comes from it. And so when we blend the two together, you get a harmony of the two different styles of distillation. And from there, it goes into our Woodford Reserve barrels. I say that specifically because we make our own barrel, barrels. We're the only major company in the world to make our own barrels. So we make every single barrel for Jack Daniels, also in our family's portfolio, and all, this, all the barrels for uh, Old Forester and Woodford Reserve and Heritage Kilo on top of that. And so when we decided to create the Woodford barrel, we didn't just use an old one or tweak it a little bit. We decided we wanted to pull forward those really amazing nutty flavors that you get from like French wine. And so we did a very long toast on our barrels. And so with that long toast and a quicker char, we were able to create a, so many more vanilla and caramel notes, which plays so well in cocktails. One, the mint julep, and two, any other cocktail. Our favorite is the Woodford Reserve uh, Manhattan. Uh, I'll give you a sneaky little extra bar tip. If your vermouth is not in the fridge, put it in the fridge now. Vermouth is a wine and it will oxidize. And so if your vermouth's not in the fridge, go ahead and run, run away and put it in the fridge now. Perfect. I knew you guys were on top of that. But our signature cocktail outside of the Kentucky Derby is the Woodford Manhattan. All those fruit notes I was talking about before play incredibly well with sweet vermouth. And so that's why we love it in a Woodford Manhattan. We also make our own line of bitters, which you can find either online or at select retailers near you. So with that, how is everyone's julep coming? Is anyone ready for a second cocktail? Ah, does it matter if you make a, a simple syrup versus a sugar cube? No, but you need to account for the dilution. So if you use a sugar cube, the actual graininess of that is going to do a really great job breaking up the essential oils of the mint. And it's going to basically make it kind of a more fine texture. You just need to make sure you add some water afterwards so you can get that diluted and you don't just have some sugar at the bottom of your drink. Unless you're fine not finishing your drinks, but 
I don't know a lot of people that are fine not finishing their drinks. So we'll see. Excellent. Used a jalapeno? Well, that would be a different flavor. <laughs> Excellent. So how is everybody doing? Are you ready to move on to your next cocktail? Perfect. I'll grab my next glass which you can also make in a julep glass, or you can make it in a wine glass because the color is so pretty, um, but just do whatever you'd like. So let's once again, start with the least expensive ingredient, the Woodford Spire. I'll just go over it really uh, kind of briefly. Like we said, we're a more of a modern day um, bourbon brand with roots to history. And so we've had this relationship with Churchill Downs going on for, about 20 years now. So we've been the official bourbon through either Early Times, which was a brand of ours until recently, Old Forester, and now Woodford Reserve. And so in honor of that and to celebrate kind of our relationship with Churchill Downs, we wanted to create another cocktail that is slightly more sessionable on a hot Kentucky May Saturday. Uh, as anybody knows, drinking juleps in the sun all day can uh, it can, it can get there, it can get there fast. So we wanted to introduce a cocktail that's a little bit more sessionable, that has a little bit more kind of like a fruity, refreshing, uh, creative twist to it. And so we're gonna start off with the, with the spire. So the spire is named after the two twin spires at the end of the racetrack or to enter into Churchill Downs. Um, it's really important for us. We use it every year in any sort of kind of marketing. One year when we were making our $1,000 mint julep, which we actually uh, raffle off the $1,000 mint julep cups every year for a select charity. This year it's going to the History Black Jockeys charity. Um, we aged honey in a barrel that we put in a spire. Gotta come up with something new every year, guys. We gotta figure this out. So if you guys have any kind of really creative ideas that we can do to really sell this thousand dollar mint julep outside that it comes in a Tiffany's cup, um, silver plated Tiffany's cup. We also have a gold one for $2,500 in case anyone's interested. Uh, but any ideas, throw them in the comments. I'd love to see them, love to send them up to the brand team to see if we've got some creative Denver ideas that we can do to make a thousand dollar mint julep. Perfect. So going on to that, we're going to start making the spire. So grab your measure of choice, me, and then we're going to do one ounce of cranberry juice. This is where we get a lot of that color. You're also going to get a nice amount of acidity from this because cranberry juice is very acidic. I once got one that was like real crunchy, like from Sprouts that had like nothing but like fresh pressed cranberries in it. Oh my gosh, that was the most tart thing I'd had in a very, very long time. Uh, this one is cranberry cocktail because I just wanted to have a little bit of sweetness. And I didn't want to have to dip into my simple syrup and kind of change up my cocktail. All right, two ounces of lemonade. For me, that's my whole guy. Perfect. And then one and a half ounces of Woodford Reserve bourbon. Excellent. Perfect. And then fill with ice all the way to the brim. Remember, I got clumpy. Excellent. Giant spoon helps for everything. I love the giant spoon. Took me a long time to learn how to stir with the giant spoon, but I'm obsessed with it now. I can do it with my eyes closed. All right, so once you've got your glass filled to the brim with ice, set it down, you need two hands. Grab your lemon and a peeler. And this I learned recently, I had a really hard time peeling citrus. Don't move the peeler, move the lemon. Then you get a nice, even lemon wheel or lemon peel. Next hint, express the oils. So this is the white side with the pith on it. And this is the side with all the oils on it. It's like bumpy, like pores in your skin. And so you wanna point that at your drink and then you wanna bend it in half at your drink. 
and you will see all the oil start shooting out of it. I usually do it about two or three times and then take one end, give it a twist, kind of hold it in place for a second so it can kind of get its shape and then just dig it right into your drink. And that is how you make a spire. Cheers, everyone. Oh, mine was incredibly full. I was very nervous. No spills. I feel good about it. It's not ice onto the ground. My dog will find it later. That's what they're there for, right? Little vacuums that move around to where all your spills are. That's what mine does. Excellent. So how's everyone enjoying the spire? Notice we didn't stir this one. You can, you don't have to. This is called a built cocktail. That means that you basically put all the ingredients in the bottom and then putting the ice in mixes the drink together itself. You'll usually see that done a lot with um, cocktails that have carbonation in them as well. So if you do like a gin and tonic, that's probably the most basic example of a built cocktail. You don't have to stir that much. Or if you do, um, I don't know, a Paloma, when you're putting either like squirt or some sort of grapefruit soda on top, that kind of effervescence brings and mixes together all of the ingredients. This one, we just had such fine ice that it pushing all the ingredients around in the cocktail as you add the ice in, mixed it up perfectly, at least for me. All right. Yeah, you added a little mint to yours? Definitely, I would. Just get the whole garden aroma. I love, I love garnishes. A lot of people skip garnishes. I'm kind of a stickler for them because I think part of a drinking experience is everything, it's all senses. You wanna be able to see it, you want it to look beautiful. That's why we have these beautiful copper cups from Woodford Reserve. Uh, you wanna be able to touch it. Some fun fact I actually learned today, embarrassed to say, I was today years old when I learned that the julep cup is designed this way because you're only supposed to hold it from the top or from the bottom because you're supposed to get this beautiful frosting along the side and you're not supposed to disturb that and so that's why the julep cups are designed this way because you're supposed to hold them either from the bottom or the top so a little bit more sensory there this beautiful frosted glass and then smell is the predecessor to taste so you smell anything before you taste it well, hopefully hopefully you're not going face first into things Hopefully your nose gets there before you. It's a little bit further out from your face than your mouth is. And so when you go to take a sip of something, you kind of take a small breath. And so you get the aromas of what you're about to consume. And then, of course, taste is important. And that any cocktail needs to be balanced. So that's why we add sugar to cocktails, because you have to balance out either the acidity of kind of lemon or citrus, or you have to balance out the astringency of alcohol. So you know, we enjoy alcohol. We're all having a fun little happy hour today, but technically our body thinks it's poison, which it's technically not wrong. Uh, so in order for our body to kind of get more used to it, we put something that associates as food, like sugar, into our cocktails. And then that kind of tricks our brain and our body into thinking that we're doing, we're eating food and we're not eating poison. But cheers to poison. Excellent. We need more julep cups. We'll see what we can do. We'll talk to our friends over at Davidson, see if they can get some more julep cups and get them over to the HRCA. I know I love a julep cup. These honestly, I've had these for five years. They have different dates on the back of them. I've honestly, I, I don't care. As long as it holds my drink, I'm usually pretty happy with it. Excellent. If you're not using a julep glass, how much ice should you use? Um, so try to get a glass approximately the same size. These are typically 12 ounce glasses. Um, you'd be surprised how big a 12 ounce glass is, like a wine glass is a 12 ounce glass. So feel free to use that. Um, I know really popular is also Collins glasses or double rocks glasses are really popular as well. Those can be anywhere from nine to 12 ounces. You added too much ice in your julep, easy to fix. Add more bourbon. 
easy fix. Maybe a little bit more mint. Just do one of those like right on top. Sprinkle it in, salt bay. Get there. Can we get a third bonus cocktail? Guys, I didn't pull out all my ingredients. I didn't pull out any of my shaking stuff or my stirring stuff. I thought these were perfect because you can make them in the glass you're gonna drink in. And they all have three ingredients. What more do you want? Three ingredient cocktails? I mean, the derby, the derby is a long day. And so asking someone to make a multi-step cocktail when they have been in the sun, having fun, laughing, it's just, it's just too much. And so you need a really simple cocktail to enjoy on Derby Day. That's why the julep is perfect. Bourbon, sugar, mint, water in the form of ice that is diluting your glass. I wish I could show you that mine is actually diluting. So it dilutes as you drink it. And that's why you put so much water in it or so much ice in it. And then the spire, cranberry, lemonade. So you get the sugar in the form of the lemonade. It's already mixed in for you. You could do lemon and simple syrup, and then even make it sparkling. You could put in like mineral water. I like a little Topo Chico myself. Uh, and so you could kind of spritz that up. If you have a vodka drinker at home, you switch in Finlandia vodka, the vodka that we can, that is served at the Oaks. I won't tell anyone, it's fine. You don't have my written permission, but it's fine. I'll be drinking bourbon. Excellent. Do we have another question? Excellent. So yes, I was talking a lot about like what we do on Derby Day. So we make, we make cocktails and we watch horses race for two minutes. It's the most exciting two minutes in sports. And it really is, it goes by so fast. It's like an entire day of pageantry. You get the, the hair done, Nails done, everything did kind of thing. Uh, and then you put on the big hat. I've got a fascinator today just because my big hat is still in storage and I haven't decided what ribbon I want to put on it this year. Who knows? I might put a bird on it. Could be fun. Um, haven't decided. So I just went for my fascinator. Very kind of classic look. Uh, so you get all dressed up. Boys, put on your bowlers or your fedoras. Put on a nice suit. If you got seersucker, that's very classic as well. Um, really, it's the pageantry. Like I said, Kentucky takes so much pride in both their bourbon and their horse racing that this is this is their gala. That all of town comes out, whether you're infield or you're in the stands, everyone comes out for the same celebration, it's being a Kentuckian. Everyone's a Kentuckian on Derby Day. And so make sure that you kind of embrace the spirit of like excitement around the Derby. Make it an event. If you're not attending any of the events downtown, make sure you pick up a bottle of Davidson's and you have a nice little derby party at home. Pick up some fried chicken. You don't even have to make it. I don't make my own fried chicken. I can't do it as well. I love to cook and I just can't make fried chicken. So I go to Popeye's and that's okay. So pick up some food, make some snacks. If you wanna make the Kentucky hot brown, one of the classic dishes served at the Kentucky Derby, that's a great idea. Mornay sauce, tomatoes and what else? Turkey. It was a really kind of a funny treat that was created at the Brown Hotel to kind of celebrate going out and seeing friends. It was made in the middle of the night. It was made with basically the scraps left over from dinner service when uh, some people who were out late having a really fun time came in and they were hungry. I think everybody has known that feeling before. And so basically the kitchen whipped up something that they had on hand, like the things that they had on hand, and they were able to make the Kentucky hot brown. And now it's one of the most loved dishes. Make banana cream pie if you like bananas. If you don't like bananas, make lemon meringue pie. All of these are like really fantastic Southern staples that make a derby party really bloom. So basically what I like to say, when you make a derby party, people are worried that they're not gonna have enough to do. And I say, if you have good food, good friends, and good music, and good bourbon, then you are going to have a fantastic time. And then make sure you have some TV to show for two minutes. It's basically all you need. And with that, I like to remind people that getting together and having fun time with friends, please do that responsibly. I know we are still kind of in certain levels of restrictions. Um, and then on top of that, as much as we'd love to enjoy our bourbon, uh, we also just 
we want you guys to be responsible. We craft our bourbon incredibly carefully. And so we want you to drink carefully as well. So make sure you have some water out for your guests. Make sure you're having some water in between cocktails and some delicious food like we talked about um, just to kind of, you know, change yourself throughout the day. Like I said, it's just ice and bourbon in this glass. So make sure you kind of pepper in some water, maybe do some spa waters with extra mint, some cucumber, like a little cocktail on its own. Excellent. What do we got in the chat? The Woodford Manhattan. Yes. I love the Woodford Manhattan. That is one of my favorites. I, I like vermouth. So I put in an ounce of vermouth and I like bitters. So my dashes aren't like as much of like a this as much as they're like a bat. So that's just kind of how I make my Manhattan. Stir it down till it's cold. Strain it out, drink it neat, or put it on a big cube. You can get those really affordable on Amazon right now, all those silicon ones, or King Supers or anywhere you can buy silicon ice molds. Crate and bear. Here, there, Target, who knows? Everywhere. Everywhere has silicon ice cubes. I love it. Excellent. Oh, thank you. The official recipe, I should know. Well, actually, you know what's fun is in Denver, we do a competition every year with some of our best bartenders. We do the Woodford Reserve Manhattan Experience. And so we tell them to make their best version of a Manhattan. And oh boy, I have had some amazing Manhattans working with all these bartenders and on this program. We always pick a finalist from Denver and we send them to the semifinals in Kentucky. And then from there, six semifinalists are chosen to become finalists and they go to New York and compete for the title. And then we usually send them off to London for London Cocktail Week. What is my favorite bitters? Of course, Angostura. I put in everything. Even if I'm not drinking for a day, I'll do like a lemon peel and some Angostura bitters in soda water. I love it. But I also love walnut bitters. Really, a little controversial. I know some people don't like them, but it's a really fun way to kind of amp up the kind of rich, toasty, vanilla kind of notes in a Manhattan. So if you do, you know, Woodford or Woodford double oaked, in case we're getting really fancy, uh, and then some walnut bitters in Manhattan, it is a fantastic cocktail. Yes, black walnut bitters, all the way. We also make a line of bitters at Woodford and our spiced cherry are amazing. I love the spice cherry. They play super well with all the fruit notes that you get in Woodford Reserve, as well as all the fruit notes that you get from a nice sweet vermouth. Excellent. So who's ready to derby? I really hope the weather is better than it is today. I don't know about where you guys are right now, but um, I'm already at like an inch and a half. My outfit is not appropriate for this weather. It's a little bit cold. But come May 1st, Let's go guys. Let's get out in the sun, mile high, with sunscreen on. Protect yourself. But it's the best. Actually, fun fact. Did you know Denver has the largest derby party in the US outside of Churchill Downs? I always like to say Denver just needs an excuse to drink outside. The race is just two minutes. We just want to get together with friends and listen to music, which we're really good at. Anyone been to Red Rocks before? Obviously. So outside of our big derby party that we usually do in uh, the Denver Performing Arts Center, yes, the Denver Derby Party, it is not happening this year, which is a bummer. They just couldn't find a way to get 5,000 people together somewhere in Denver, maybe next year. Let's hope because they're still giving away two scholarships. I don't know if you guys are aware, the Denver Derby Party gives away two scholarships to uh, Colorado State University to two um, deserving students in the local area. Uh, they always have a lot of really good entries and they always give away scholarships, even last year and this year when they weren't able to have the party. So they're giving away two and they gave away two last year. They usually give away four a year. So they're still doing their part to kind of raise funds and give away the scholarship. But there'll be lots of fun derby parties around town if you come into Denver. But if you're having one at home, make sure there's a bottle of Woodford Reserve bourbon. Excellent. 
Excellent. Does anyone have any questions? Virtual Derby party. That's it, that's you. You got this. Invite all your friends, get a Zoom link. You can even share your screen. They're showing on NBCSports.com. You can put it on your screen. You guys can all just cheer on for two minutes. Ooh, even more fun. An hour after the race, we're doing the Old Forester Kentucky Turtle Derby. It is the slowest eight minutes in sports. So we put all turtles in the center of a ring and they have to make their way out. This is the third running of the Old Forester Kentucky Turtle Derby. Um, it's only been ran twice, uh, both times because Churchill was not able to open. One was during World War II and the other was last year. Uh, it was incredibly fun and incredibly frustrating because the turtle I picked made it all the way to the edge and then turned around and went right back to the middle. So something very different than you see in typical horse racing. They usually don't go backwards. My turtle did. I won't, I won't forgive you, Steve. Oh, yes, my turtle's name was Steve. Should have gone with Green Mamba. Or Seattle Slow. You guys see I'm really here for the turtle race, right? In the bourbon. Excellent. Private tours at Woodford. Um, so honestly, I just booked them through the website. I wish I could do more. I wish I could do something more fancy than that. And actually right now we're still not open for tours necessarily. Uh, we're open for tastings. So you're welcome to visit the home place. It is still one of the most beautiful places to visit if you ever go to Kentucky. Um, people have told me, I'm not being biased, uh, because we're located in Versailles, Kentucky, so we're off the Bourbon Trail. And so to get to Woodford Reserve, you actually have to drive through the winding kind of pastures of Kentucky bluegrass, driving past a bunch of thoroughbred horses, and then you finally arrive on the historic landmark that is Woodford Reserve Distillery. I know it's very inconvenient. I am sorry, but it is breathtaking. So our, our buildings date back to 1812. We have our beautiful double pot stills there. Um, we're actually expanding. We're adding three more pot stills. So we're very excited about that. So more Woodford for everyone to enjoy. Um, and it's just, it's a really beautiful experience. Everything they do has, an incredible amount of substance and style, and they really just want people to feel at home. We call it the home place for a reason. Yay, we've had some visitors. Yes. Woodford Reserve. It's beautiful. People really make a day out of it. I could sit there on the porch all day. Drink you, whoops. Excellent. Any questions? Well, if we don't have any more questions, I will go ahead and um, I will close this out for the night. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again to Megan and Woodford Reserve. That was amazing. We appreciate you being here and for getting us ready for the Derby Day. And I think it's like two weeks or three weeks about away. So we're close. Um, Hopefully everybody was able to pick up their Woodford Reserve, but if not, um, don't forget to use that coupon through Davidson's. It's good two weeks after the event, so grab it um, within the next couple of weeks and get yourself ready for that derby party that you're going to have. Um, and once again, thank you to Davidson's. We really appreciate their support through this entire series. Um, without them, these, this series would not have been a thing. Um, this is our last happy hour for... Um, a while um, as things start to open back up and uh, weather is getting nicer. Um, hopefully we can get back to some in-person stuff. We'll see. But um, in the meantime, um, if you have any suggestions of um, more happy hours like this in the future, feel free to reach out to me. We would love to hear some great suggestions. Or if you'd like to continue these, we would love to hear that feedback as well. We appreciate your support. I know there's so many people on this call that I've seen from the beginning um, supporting us. I mean, these some of these names have been here seriously since the start. So I really appreciate your support and thank you for being with us through this pandemic and um, becoming a small little happy hour family that we've become. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, with that, uh, I will close this out and uh, have a great rest of your night. Thank you all, I appreciate you. Don't close it out, Danielle.